In this video, I want to use GNS3 to demonstrate the practice you would want to do at a CCNA Cisco certification level with OSPF. You ready? So I've fired up GNS3. I've got an untitled project, a blank slate ready to go. Let's grab three routers and drop them into the topology. So we'll do R1, R2, and R3. Now we can directly back to back connect these. I'll use the serial interfaces for this. Keep in mind that you could put in switches and these would be the GNS3 layer two switches. And that would have the benefit of you being able to like up and down interfaces on one device and not affect the other device and things of that nature. But for this simple little test, for this simple practice, you don't even have to do that. You can just back to back connect these things. So there they are connected. Let's fire them up in GNS3 and let's practice the OSPF configuration. And you wouldn't want to just practice the config though. You'd want to also practice verification and troubleshooting. So I'll expand on that a bit as well. So I need to turn off my connector tool. I always forget to do that. And then once I do that, I can right click and go to my console connection. Now here in R1, we want to be as efficient and as quick as possible with the required configuration. So I go into global configuration mode and I attack our first interface at serial one slash zero. We would no shut it. We would put on an IP address of let's say 10.10.10.1 with a 24 bit mask. And then we would do our OSPF config under the interface IP OSPF one area zero and we would end. You want to be very fast with your configurations like that. And now we've slid over to the R2 device. Let's do the configuration there. And we're gonna get some verification right off the bat here. Watch this. So interface serial zero, uh, one slash zero it is, and we're gonna no shut it. We're gonna put an IP address on it of 10.10.10.2 with our 24 bit mask. And we're gonna say IP OSPF one area zero. The process ID of one doesn't matter. It doesn't have to match the other side. It's the area ID that would have to match the other side. Now I said, we're gonna get some verification right away. And we just did look at that. An OSPF adjacency came up with the R1 device. How awesome. So we get automated verification, if you will, that we're on the right track here. Next up it's interface serial one slash one. We'll no shut it. We'll do a 10.20.20.2 IP address with the mask. And it would help if I use the IP address keywords. How rude of the router to require such a thing. IP OSPF1 area. Let's do a separate area over here. Why don't we? So we'll do area 10 on this link. So there we go. We'll end that configuration and we're now ready to slide over to the R3 device. So here we are on R3, we'll do configure terminal, interface serial one slash zero, no shut. The IP address is gonna be 10.20.20.3 with the 24 bit mask. We'll do IP OSPF one area 10. Uh, whoop, look at that. We did area 120, let's try area 10. And let me do show interface serial one slash zero. That won't help us. How about do show run interface serial one slash zero. I want to make sure that we have the correct area ID under there. We'll end our configuration and we should get some immediate feedback just like we did on the R2 device. We should see the adjacency come up for OSPF over this area 10 between R2 and R3. Now I may have missed it. So you would immediately go show IP OSPF neighbor in order to confirm. Yeah, I did miss the output that we have a full adjacency with the neighbor that is R2. So once you've got the topology up like this, you would want to run through additional verifications. Show IP OSPF neighbor is obviously a great idea. How about show IP OSPF interfaces? That's a great idea. How about show IP route? We should have an inter area route inside the routing table for the 10, 10, 10 subnet. And in fact, we should be able to ping R1 at 10, 10, 10, 1, thanks to that route in the routing table. What you would then want to do is practice troubleshooting and how you would practice troubleshooting in this topology is you would break stuff. Let's break this relationship 
uh, like we did inadvertently there for a moment. So we'll go into interface serial 1 slash 0, for instance, and we'll say no IP OSPF1 area 10. And we'll say IP OSPF1 area 110. And note that when we do our show IP OSPF neighbor, we are not going to get an adjacency with that mismatch in the area identification. So we practice breaking things, practice fixing things, and this will ensure that in a very simple three router topology inside of GNS3, we're totally ready for what might be thrown our way in a simulation in the CCNA exams regarding OSPF. Thank you so much for watching this video, compliments of AJSNetworking.com.